All right. Uh, with yeah, exactly. Uh, all right. With that, it's called to order, uh, and we're going to do a pledge of allegiance to start off. Please stand. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. So the first thing on our agenda tonight is the approval of the minutes from the last Senate meeting. Um, the minutes have been posted since last week. Is there any ad uh, additions to the minutes from last week? No? All right. Is there approval to second to motion? Second to approve the minutes from last week. Second. second. Okay. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Passed. Approved. Um, next will be the approval of the minutes for the Senate meeting. Um, is there any uh, any additions to the Senate tonight, agenda tonight? All right, is there a motion to approve the agenda for tonight? Motion, all right, is there a second? All right, all those in favor? All those opposed? All right, agenda is now approved. All right, so the President's report, um, just a quick few updates for everyone. Um, just wanted to say that this week is homecoming, so definitely try to attend all the homecoming events. Uh, this Saturday is the game. I believe it starts at 2 o'clock. Can, can someone, 2 o'clock, so make sure you attend. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, they do have a lot of events going on throughout the week, um, including right now, if you go outside, there is the banner competition. I really suggest that after this is all done, uh, check out the banners. Uh, a lot of the effort and, and, you know, being put into these banners is definitely wonderful, and I love to see it. So just make sure you turn off all electronic devices. I know you're EMS, but... Yeah, thank you. Um, with that, we do still have two positions open in the Student Government Association. We have the Assistant Vice President for Facilities and Operations, uh, and we do have an Election Commissioner position open. So make sure you do apply. Those applications can be found online. Uh, it's pretty easy. Secondly, we do have positions open as for volunteers. If you do wish to help out with the student government uh, outside of your organization, we are looking for volunteers to help us out with a bunch of different things, uh, including things such as Clean and Green, Back to the Borough, and other programming events that help us out. Uh, with that, I did talk to the, the president this morning. Uh, there are some, I know there are some issues that everyone has kind of been talking about with, with scholarships and, and the, the banner and, and, and how internet's not working. They are going to be discussing it soon this week uh, under, uh, at least you know, from what I'm being told, and, and Dr. Hushman is, is probably one of the best, you know, he, he sticks with his word. He, when he says he's going to get something done, he gets it done. Uh, so that is in discussion right now with those kind of things. If you have any kind of questions with that, please come up to me. I do meet with the president on a regular basis. So if you have any issues, please come up to me and, and we can talk afterwards. Um, with that, that does conclude my report. Are there any questions? All right, thank you. All right, next would be open session. Uh, we do not have anyone signed up for open session. However, I will allow for anyone to come and speak. Uh, just a reminder, it's Sitting wise, academic and class senators over there, club senators in the middle, and then you have our petition clubs on the side over down there. All right, so no one in open session. Next, we go to the executive announcements. Uh, so, first, AVP of Government Relations, Molly. What side is she? It's on, okay, cool. Hey, everyone. So today started the annual voter registration drive. There was a table downstairs in the student center. You probably saw it. I had some really enthusiastic volunteers. Uh, if you're not registered to vote, by all means, do it with them. You can also register to vote online, talk to me, anything. We're trying to make this as easy for everyone as possible. If your organization is volunteering with the voter reg drive and you weren't able to come to a workshop, schedule with me as soon as possible so I can walk you through the volunteer process as well as the voter reg process. Um, it can look a little intimidating. It's actually pretty easy, but I'll walk you through it anyway. Um, again, I just want to thank all of my volunteers. As I said, today was the first day, and it went better than planned, and I really appreciate everyone's help. So thank you. Hi, everyone. Alexia Mazari, Chief Financial Officer. I just wanted to first remind you guys to check your mailboxes or remind your senator or president to check your mailboxes when I uh, put financial paperwork back into your mailboxes to be corrected. I noticed most of them are packed and haven't been checked. So just make sure you're keeping an eye on that. Some important information comes out through there. Um, also, we have supplementals being voted on this meeting. If you missed the deadline, which was October 7th or 6th, 
Um, the next one is November 14th, so if your club does need extra funding, you can apply if you're chartered, and that will be due November 14th, so just keep an eye. Hi everyone, I'm Christine Collins, and I'm the Executive Vice President. So this year, I decided to bring back something that was done in the past, which was a Club of the Month. So the Club of the Month is based off of standing with SGA, as well as um, how many service projects are done by a club and how well a club sticks to their mission statement. We have a lot of amazing clubs on campus, and I want to commend all of you guys because you've been doing so, so many great things. The club that uh, the executive board and I that stood out to us uh, committed or did perform five service projects this semester or this month for the month of September. They helped out with the organization fair. They were um, participated in the Red Cross Blood Drive. They helped to design a shelving unit for High Bay in Rowan Hall, which increased the storage space as well as they volunteered at the engineering carnival and they are planning on participating in the homecoming parade coming up. Their mission is to prepare for collegiate um, SAE competitions, which include a mini Baja 1,000 mile long race in which they design a car and also a super mileage event. So I want to commend the Society of Automotive Engineers. If the Senator Casey Bate could please come up. So speaking to service projects, um, I just have two quick announcements for you guys. Uh, Clean and Green is this Friday, so if your club is interested in that, you just have to get 50% of your members to come out. The first 300 volunteers will get free t-shirts, and they're actually really cute, so come out and you can get a free t-shirt. And that starts at 11 a.m. on the Student Center back patio, so you can sign in there. Uh, the other one is Scholar Fest, which is put on by the library every year. They're looking for volunteers to help set up the ballroom the night before, which is going to be October 27th. That's a really quick and easy way to get your service project in. They just need help, like, carrying some stuff and setting up the posters and stuff. So if you're interested in that, um, just shoot me an email. I can answer any questions you may have about it. It's probably between, like, 2 and 8 p.m. on the 27th. Thank you. Hi guys, I have an open application for the College of Humanities and Social Sciences. So right now, a road announcer has been sent out. I also have emailed the dean who has sent it out to everyone within the college and signs have been posted. The application closes October 31st if you wanna let any of your friends know. The applications are located in the SGA office and they can be placed in my mailbox by October 31st. My next committee meeting is October 20th in the Student Center at room 129 at 7 p.m. if anyone would like to attend. Hey guys, my name is Anthony. I am the AVP for University Advancement. Um, I will be posting on the Rowan Announcer on Thursday about our new senator at large positions. If anyone's interested, you guys can send me an email, sgaadvancement at rowan.edu. Again, you don't have to be freshman, junior, whatever you are. You can apply, transfer, anything like that. Um, we're having our senior week committee meeting this Monday, uh, October 20th at 7 p.m. in room 129. Last week we only had two seniors from the whole senior class come out, so I encourage you guys all to come out because if there's something that you guys want to do, I'm opening all ideas, so I don't want you guys to be upset if we do something that you guys don't want to do. Um, we're also having our committee meeting for University Advancement that same night, so if you guys are interested, I encourage you guys to come out. Uh, we're going to be at homecoming this Saturday. It's going to be a class tent where we're going to have different games, bag-o, uh, can jam, egg toss, so come out and meet your class senators. They're over here. You guys can come out and address any concerns you have to them. Uh, also, as for gourmet dining, last week when we sent out those survey cards, they have emailed everybody that uh, sent out a concern that they addressed. They emailed all of you and let you know what was updated. I'm just going to share a few of them real quick. They, they finally perfected the rotisserie oven so the chicken is no longer dry because that was a concern. They're currently reworking the salad bar to gain more space so that we can incorporate more salad bar options and cottage cheese is on that list. That was somebody's concern. Um, there's, no, there's not a lot of milk, so they have increased the milk orders based on the consumption. Um, the late night options have been increased from last year. Last year, the only thing that was open was Prof's Place. We kept Prof's Place Grill Nation open, and we have also added Express and Prof's Pizza located in the food court. All three areas are open till 1 a.m. They're pleased to announce that Sono now offers ground beef. 
and they will also be looking into getting refried beans. Um, we have added a station called Sprout in the back of the cafeteria next to Dish, which used to be the chef's table. That is dedicated to gluten-friendly, vegan, and vegetarian options. And they're going to look into getting almond milk as well. Um, the last one is we offer different foods at the specialty bar located on the other side of Global, which used to be 360. You will find a variety of foods there from Chinese, cheesesteaks, Greek, Italian, etc. So if there's something that you guys don't see that you guys would like, they are opening to all suggestions. So if you guys would like to uh, suggest something to them, their offices are downstairs in the marketplace. In the back, just ask to speak to one of the managers and they will take your concerns. Hello everyone, AVP of Student Affairs, Ryan Amaro. Uh, committee meeting next week in the Dewey Lounge of Robinson. Just by a show of hands, does anyone know where the Dewey Lounge is? Okay, so a couple. Uh, but I'll be sending out an email reminding everyone along with a diagram actually showing where the Dewey Lounge is. Uh, I scheduled a meeting with the director of uh, the Career Management Center to discuss uh, their services that they're offering. So internships, full-time jobs, and how are we attracting employers to actually come here because, of course, we're all in college to get a job. Uh, I also am going to be tabling along with senators and uh, fellow e-board members on Monday and Wednesday of next week in the Wellness Center uh, to survey students on how the services are. Uh, that's all. Hi, everyone. If you haven't signed in yet, sign in at the end of the meeting. I'll be out there. Also, let me know if you're not getting my email with um, tonight's agenda. All right, so next on the agenda tonight would be unfinished business. Uh, we do have unfinished business from this last Senate meeting. Uh, they include the three different constitutional changes. Uh, Tyler's going to bring them up right now. So we have these three different resolutions brought to uh, one of the senators, Andrew Goss. He brought it up. Um, we're going to ask him to come back up to just quickly explain all three again real fast, and then we can possibly vote on them uh, as a whole or separately if need be. Hi again. Is this mic working? Yeah, I'll just use that one. Stay. Um, hi again. Uh, so quickly... The first resolution was to amend the student government's parliamentary procedure, so basically saying we're going to be using Robert's rules, not some other definition which is ambiguous and not specific. Uh, the second resolution is defining quorum as greater than majority instead of 50% plus one because they're not the same and 50% plus one is not a good term to use. And then the uh, defining terms of office, moving that from the elections policy into the actual constitution, where it should be, not in a subsidiary policy. Any questions about any of them? They've been up on the, there's been links to them on the previous minutes. Yeah. All right, so All what right, we're going to, is there any discussion about these different amendments? Do we need to see them again? Do we need to go through and read? No discussion with these at all. They should be so, pretty convenient, so good. I move to approve all three resolutions in one motion. All right, this is the motion on the and second it uh, to vote on all three motions at the same time. Um, we do need two thirds vote to approve these constitutional changes since they are constitutional changes. Uh, so all those in favor, uh, please raise your placards and we'll count. I wish we'd just, please count. So pretty sure that's majority. Is there any objection? And if there's no objection, it's assumed that you have a technical term to save counting. But are you raising yours? No. I'm allowed to. I'm the senator. You guys can't vote. Recuse myself? No. No. That's not how it works. Now, if you guys aren't allowed to vote because you're not voting members. All right, you can put it down. All those opposed, please raise your placards. All right, we have. All right. All right, looks like it passed. All three constitutional changes are passed. Uh, we will add them to our new constitution, or at least they should be updated when we update them. Um, all right, 
Uh, with that, we have no thing else on unfinished business. Next, we have new business. Uh, the first thing under new business is petitioning clubs. Uh, so we do have petitioning clubs. We have five of them coming up tonight. Uh, we have two minutes of speaking to present and two minutes for questions. Uh, Christine, would you like to explain the process a little bit quickly just for people to understand? All right, never mind. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to ask the clubs to come up. The So first club we're going to start off with is the Biomedical Engineering Society. Uh, we're going to ask you to come up to explain your situation um, and what your, what your club is all about. You have two minutes. At 30 seconds left, I'm going to tap the end of the mallet, not mallet, gavel. I keep on saying mallet. I don't know why. Anyway, 30 seconds left, I'm going to tap so you know. And then at the end, 30 seconds, you have no time left, I'm just hit the gavel. All right? As with that, I'm going to start when you, when you get for Hi everyone, my name is Jasmine. I'm a senior chemical engineering major and I started the Biomedical Engineering Society. Um, the engineering just got a new major, Biomed Engineering. So for the freshmen, they don't have a club yet, so we wanted to start a club just for them. Um, as we grow, the club will include all the incoming freshmen and hopefully it'll provide them a way to network with other Biomed professors, um, give them different internship opportunities, and have a society just for them, because right now they don't have any society that they actually belong to, where all the other engineering majors have, American Institute of Chemical Engineers, um, the Mechanical Society, um, the, chem the civils have their own society, so this is something new that we would bring to the engineering building. So that's it. Yeah. All righty, thank you very much for that. Uh, with that, we do we only started three minutes. So we have three minutes for questions now because we have three minutes left out of this whole discussion. Um, what are the, some questions that we have for the Biomedical Engineering Society? Is there any questions? Uh, before I preface this, remember that these budgets do come, if they get approved, budgets can be you know, diluted a little bit more. So just make sure you are a little bit tougher with these questions. Uh, it's important to be tough with these questions, essentially. Uh, any, any questions right there? We have 39 incoming freshmen, but the club right now also includes all the other engineering majors that are interested in bio because they weren't given the opportunity to switch into the major. So what, the question again was how many freshmen are involved in the organization? So right now the club has about 55 members. Awesome. Any other questions in the back? Yeah. Yep. Yes, um, we had our first event that was advertised um, during the first week. So all the freshmen came out, they all know about the club and we've been advertising and we've had about three meetings now. Um, most of them are very interested and show up to every single meeting. All right, so the question was how many freshmen were involved in the club? We had a question right here. So right now we plan on having um, different movie nights with them just to get them involved in ca on campus. We also plan on bringing in um, biomedical professionals to speak with them to find out um, different job opportunities they may have. And we also plan on going on uh, pharmaceutical trips and other biomed events like that in oh. the future. All right, any other questions? Question right here. This one will be tied, yes. The Biomed Engineering Society is a professional society all over the country. Um, Drexel has a society, Rutgers has a society. Um, as of now, we don't have enough members to have a national society or be a part of that, but that is in the future for the club. All right, I can take one more question. All right, if not, you can, anyone related to the Biomedical Engineering Society can please leave the room as we discuss and vote on you. Congratulations, you are now petitioning SGA Club. All right, next we have MAPS. So, a representative of MAPS, please stand up and come here. All right, same thing, you have 30, 20, 2 minutes to speak. You're going to need 30 seconds left. I'm going to tap it at the end of that 2 minutes when I hit the gavel. Uh, Hi, whenever everyone. you're ready. Oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Kimberly St. Jean. I'm a biochemistry major here that started MAPS, which stands for the Minority Association for Premedical Students. We are a national organization uh, 
founded by the Student National Medical Association, which is the medical student level um, national organization. So our main goals is to uh, increase minority matriculation into healthcare professional fields and to raise more culturally competent um, healthcare professionals as well as to serve underrepresented areas. So we already have about 60 members. September was our recruitment month and our first meeting was this past uh, Wednesday. We currently have three community service opportunities in place. So we work very closely with both Cooper Medical School as well as um, Rowan School of Osteopathic Medicine, SNMA chapters there. So. Awesome, thank you very much. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing. Uh, since you ended so quickly, we're gonna have three minutes for questions. Uh, we're gonna bin, any, any questions out there? Three minutes for questions, right here. Yeah, definitely. Um, we currently coordinate with the pre the pre health society as well as other um, like pre allied health, all of those health related groups. We definitely will coordinate with. Right. Next question. Any other questions? All right. No other questions. Can you please leave the room as we discuss and vote? And anyone associated with maps? Congratulations. You are now approved as an SGA Charter Club, Petitioning Club. All right, can the members of the Society of American Military Engineers please come up? All right, again, you have two minutes to present and you have two minutes for questions. Um, you have 30 seconds left. I will tap the end of the gavel. Um, ready whenever you are. Hello. All right, thank you, Joe, and thanks everyone for having us tonight. My name is Casey Bate. I am the president of the Society of American Military Engineers. Joining me is my vice president, Alexander Gobler, uh, tre yeah, treasurer, Rachel Adams, and SGA Senator Joshua McKinley. Our club is dedicated to bringing together people with military and engineering interests. We are not a political club in any way whatsoever. We are just a club for people that enjoy military technology and like to have fun. Our club works to promote a family atmosphere and we try not to make our e-board above the rest of our, the members in our club. We want all the members in our club to have a say in how the club is run and what we do. Um, we are connected to a large national organization of the same name. Uh, and unlike many engineering clubs, which are only associated by name and have no actual contact, we are in direct contact with the uh, SAMENJ post, uh, the president of of the NJ Post. Um, bu, bu, bu. We are also the first student chapter, the first same student chapter in the state of New Jersey. So that's another perk. Um, our goal is to get our members off campus and out into the real world. We have visits coming up with Lockheed Martin's Morristown location, as well as a conference in November with Drexel's same chapter. Um, we also have guest speakers at our meeting and we are working to collaborate with other clubs uh, for projects. We have already had two successful bake sales, two meetings, participation in the engineering carnival, organization fair, and a service event. And if voted into SGA, we promise to show the same dedication and professionalism. Thank you. All right. All right. Try to keep the uh, clapping to the end so we can speed this up. All right, so um, we're gonna have two minutes for questions. Uh, is there any questions out there for the Society of American Military Engineers, right here in the Maroon. Yeah, um, so, like, there are a lot of engineering societies, and, like, what are you going to do, like, the difference, like, like, you're a military society, so, like, what specifically are you planning on doing to, like, run engagement from any of the other, like, professional organizations that you have to engage with? And that is true. There are a lot. I believe there are 12 or 13 at this point, counting us. Um, again, our goal is to run things a little bit differently. We want everybody to have a say in our club. And we're really big on getting out, you know. I've been involved in other clubs. I mean, you saw me come up before with Baja. And we want to get students out. We want to get out of the classroom, get off campus as much as, much as possible. And, you know, me with Boeing, Lockheed, as many big companies as we can. Uh, the same national organization also has many, many conferences and events. And like I said, we are directly tied in with them. We are updated with everything that NJ Post is doing. So, you know, whatever events they have for us, we're going to them. Okay, we have, I'm gonna go right here, yeah, actually, yeah. Um, so you're a national, so you are part of the national engineering society. Yes. Okay. So do you think you can, or do you want to get involved in that engineering society? Like, what do you think 
they do give us funding, and this is not about the money. For anybody who has ever tried to start a club on campus, you know it is vital to be part of SGA, both for support and just, I mean, there's so many things that SGA runs that you need to run a club, and it's just it's vital to be part of SGA to have that support from them. All right, any other questions? Rare. No. Is there a question involved yeah, in this? I also like to say before time runs out that we have 50 members that are at least interested and we have had solid membership at all of our meetings so far. So we are not lacking for membership. Okay, we'll just take one more question over here. Oh, and unless we want to extend time, sorry, keep on going. <laughs> We don't have any projects. We've had a lot of ideas. We don't have anything in the works just yet. I've been going to numerous, numerous different club meetings and seeing what everybody else is working on, and we're really trying to pair up with different clubs, not just do something on our own, but pair up with robotics on a possible, like, you know, bomb searching robot, or the aeronautics club does uh, the quadcopters. I triple E, I've been in contact with Jeff, who's in the back on a numerous different projects and events, so we're trying to pair up as much as we can. That was the two minutes, unless we want to extend time for, dis for questions. Um, otherwise, we're going to have to vote and uh, discuss. Is there any, does anyone want to discuss any more or question any more? All right, can you please leave the room? Um, and anyone involved with the Society of American Military Engineers? Such a long walk. You are now a chartered petitioning SGA club. But it's not about the money, though. Uh, just a reminder, please keep off your phones, uh, just because this, these discussions do take a lot from the budgets from everyone else. Uh, these discussions are pretty important for every club here. Uh, the next one we do have up is Rowan Ren Rangila. Am I saying that correct? Rangela, Rangila. Rangila. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, but they are up to petition. Um, you have two minutes, 30 seconds left. I'll hit the end of the gavel. At the end of two minutes, I will end discussion. Of course. It's, um, it's already up. What's up? Keep that out of, okay, awesome. Yeah, you can bring it up. All right, whenever you're ready. Hi guys, um, this is Rowan Rangila. I'd just like to say that Rangila means colorful. It's a part of Indian culture that's colorful, that's happy, it's kind of like fun. Um, we're petitioning today to be an Indian dance team, kind of, but also an Indian club. Um, the executive board is, I'm, my name's Ranjuni, or Jenny. Yeah, so this is our executive board. Um, our vice president could be here today, but she would have wanted to. So our main idea is to enrich the community of the Indian traditions and cultural aspects of India, and not just around the Bollywood dance and dance in general. Um, we also want to compete in the forthcoming years when we can get like a full team um, around like you know when when we can, and we want to be like. Uh, Rutgers and Drexel and competing against them. Um, kind of like a friendly com competition, nothing uh, too harsh. Um, also, it's to bring a different diversity to the community. Um, not just Asian cul culture club, but an Indian culture club I thought would be more unique and you know, a different part of Asia that 
people don't know much of. Um, but our main point is to create a fun and yet competitive environment within the community and we'd be doing fun activities throughout the year. And then our membership is not just Indians, it's everybody. Um, anybody can join, anybody can learn. We all have experience in some sort of Indian dance, so that's it. All right, um, so is there any discussion, or sorry, questions about Ron Rangila over down there? Um, well, I was thinking the, probably the rec center uh, dance place or in here, but I don't know if we can get it in here. Um, but that was my idea, or our idea. So, yeah. Any other questions? Right here. Huh? Is the membership Yeah, we have currently uh, 40 members who have decided to, you know, join. And um, they've been coming out and helping us out a lot, like deciding on stuff. And we have more people who want to actually join, but we don't have room, like a place to hold it. So, like that many people yet. Any other questions? Question right in the back over there. At the current moment, we do. We have about, uh, currently a dance like Pandemica has about 14 people in their dance team and we have that number at the moment. The question was, how many people does it take to be competitive? Was that correct? Okay. Any other questions? Over here, in the blue. The like the teaching, it's the same thing as, you know, coming out to our meetings. Like, it's the same, like, it'll be within our club. So yeah. All right, I can take one more question unless we want to extend time. Question right here. Is there any plans on hosting a bongo on campus? Yes, is, is there um, any? we are gonna be doing bongo. We're gonna be doing holy sessions, which is holy is a colorful time during Diwali where it's like we, um, sorry, it's not during Diwali, but it's a uh, holy is like the color run, but we actually use powder and we use water and everybody dresses up in white. So we hand out white t-shirts to everybody and we get people to come out and they throw water on each other, play around, it's a lot of fun. And so there's we have really cool music. Yeah. Awesome. All right, so that is the end of questions, unless anyone wants to extend time. Um, anyone involved in the Rowan Rangila class? Am I right saying that? Okay, I'm saying it right this time. Uh, can you please exit the room? Oh, you're taking too long. <laughs> you need more cardio in your life. <laughs> Congratulations, you are now an SJ Petitioning Club. All right, next, we, next up and lastly we have MedLife. Can any representatives from MedLife please come up? Again, you have two minutes. I'm gonna, 30 seconds left, I'm gonna tap. I'm gonna end you at two minutes though. Whenever you're ready. Hi everyone, I'm Sneha, and we're here to present about MedLife, and this is the eBoard. MedLife, the name itself, is actually an acronym for Medicine Education and Development for Low Income Families Everywhere. So what MedLife is, it's actually a national organization that works in poor communities, specifically in countries such as India, Tanzania, um, Ecuador, and Peru. And they work with the local community members there and the local leaders to really develop the medicine the healthcare, the developmental, and the educational part of these communities. So um, what is the main driving force of MedLife? Our student volunteers, or you guys as college students, and what they do is they um, fundraise on campus for MedLife cause, they spread the word about global health issues, um, or they volunteer themselves to go abroad and help out in these poor communities. 
Um, what I'm trying to do with MedLife at Rowan is, like I said earlier, um, fundraise for their cause, um, make the campus more health conscious, but take like a more biological slash medical approach towards it. Um, recruit anyone who's interested in going on one of these mission trips and just representing Rowan as a group for one of these mission trips to one of these countries. Um, and just basically um, community service for group involvement and just more fundraising ideas and stuff like that. So um, what do students in general gain? I believe from my life it's, it's a really great experience if you go abroad because you get to work hand in hand with healthcare professionals in these communities in terms of gynecologists, physicians, doctors. So it's really great for um, healthcare. But anybody who in general wants to work with people, I think it's great. Um, and it also, it also attracts engineers in terms of development, developmental aspect of um, med life. And I think it's honestly a great experience and it's a good cause to participate in. Thank you. Awesome, it's perfect timing. All right, we have two minutes for questions or any questions for med life. Right here. Um, we're welcome to options, but uh, yeah, anybody like, because a lot of what we do is similar to what they do, so, but ours also involves the healthcare aspect to it and also the educational aspect to it. It's just not limited to engineers, but engineers also have the opportunity to participate. Any other questions? Right here. Um, so far, we are planning on hosting our first fundraiser. Um, we have some ideas. We're just trying to bug a place for it. Um, we already have, we're already um, volunteering with the blood drive here. So that's something that's definitely there. We have landmark fundraisers. Um, and we're trying to do like a group, like a fun group activity. And I have, a, I have at least about 15 students who are interested in going on a trip to Lima, Peru for a week this winter break to help um, the community there. Anybody Any else? Questions? I have a question right here inside. Um, there is an application fee that you have to pay through their national website if you're willing to go. But if you do decide to go as a group, we're definitely going to throw fundraisers to fundraise for our trip there um, to try to like help students out with any issues. But the price for this is um, it's a very reasonable price, the application fee for it. Right. Any other questions for MedLife? All right, MedLife, will you please leave the room as we discuss and vote? and anyone else who is associated with MedLife. Congratulations, you are now a petitioning SJ club. I um, just want to remind all the clubs that just got petitioned last or tonight uh, to please meet Christine in the other room after Senate is all over. Um, next up, we do have a club for probation under new business. Uh, will the students for literacy please come up and explain? Oh boy. Kidding. Uh, same thing, you have two minutes to discuss the situation, and we have two minutes for questions for you afterwards. Yep. Whenever you're ready. Good evening, everyone. My name is Sierra Boyer, and I'm the president for Students for Literacy. Just a little bit about us. We're not just a club just for for education majors. We're just a club for everyone who is willing to spread literacy awareness. We spread awareness and education to the university as well as the community on issues regarding literacy education. And our club is and will participate in projects that will enlighten those at the university and the community about literacy awareness. A few reasons why we're up here tonight. Um, we actually, a group of 10 girls just came together maybe about a month ago and decided to pick this club back up. And last year, the e-board for this club really just let it fall behind. Missed Senate meetings, missed paperwork being handed in. That's why we have so many points that we do. But we are a new e-board. Uh, set, we're seven strong and we're a group of really intelligent and really motivated women and we would really just like to be still have our charter here. So I'm done. All right. So we have three minutes for questions. Any questions for students with literacy? Yes. Right here. I have two hands. How will we avoid the last round? We will avoid it by just having everyone attend the meetings, getting our paperwork in on time. We have so many e-board positions now that everyone has a delegated task. So everything will be handed in on time and we'll stay on top of our stuff. All right. We have a hand over here. Hi, I'm Olivia. 
Kelly. I'm the vice president. Um, this semester, we've already had our first meeting and we've had a successful fundraiser. We had 40 people come out to the Yoga Factory. That's just one of our um, ways that we've already put our foot in the door to spread this awareness. In addition, we've established a mystery reader program with the preschool here at Rowan. So we're already giving back to the um, literacy in our community and starting with the children who are enrolled in the Rowan preschool. Um, those are just a few more. We're going to be volunteering at the Clean and Green, um, and we are looking forward to doing Read Across America with the preschool. And that's just our main starting stone, but we do want to spread out, and as we gain more members, which I'm sure we will as we are part of the cohort, there's cohorts for literacy in the education program here at Rowan, and we are here to um, come together and to start that and create more projects and get our feet out in all the doors. Right. Any other questions? I have one in the back. Yeah. Yep. yep. Um, so you say you have a brand new board. How many people is the entire e-board new? No, our entire e-board is new. Everyone from last year is out. We have seven new leaders. So I'm t I promise you that there's going to be a change with us. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? We have this hand closer up to me, yeah. Yep. Well, our first meeting, we had about 12 come out, but I also received a number of emails, about 15 other people that couldn't make it. So I'm going to say we're around 20, 30 mark, but yeah, we're, we're growing every day. <laughs> All right. Any other questions or comments? Right here. actually two days after we were hand selected to be on this e-board mm -hmm. um, this also I said it is part of an extension of the reading endorsement here at Rowan University which is a very popular um, endorsement to add to your teacher edu education and certification um, with that it serves as an extension and everyone who is involved in the new literacy studies program and the reading endorsement is highly encouraged to come together and to um, learn and gather other people to come in and serve the community through literacy awareness. Right. I can take one last question, Rob, in the back. Scouts my whole life and I've earned my bronze, silver, and gold award. Um, and in my junior year of high school, I served as a um, committee member on a, my town's national historical board. Um, and I have tons of leadership training through um, the Girl Scouts, RILA. I've gone to leadership conferences. Um, they've flown me out to Las Vegas to learn more about leadership and how to make clubs grow. And those are just a few of the qualifications I have to support our club and that statement. Yes, I'm also the president of another club here. So we have two other clubs here, but only one's uh, recognized by SGA. And like her, I'm an RE on campus, so I'm definitely well versed in being a, a leader. And yeah. Um, with that, I would, unless someone wants to extend time for questions, we're going to ask anyone involved in Students for Literacy to please leave the room. I mean, it's a, all right, you're not dechartered. That should be the be best thing. You're not dechartered. You are, are not dechartered. You are on probation, however. <laughs> that sounds terrible. <laughs> all right, next up, we do have supplemental requests. We have five different requests for supplementals. It's going to be a long night for club stuff tonight. Uh, the first organization I'm going to ask to come up is Hey Marlene. Alexi's going to explain the process a little bit more. Okay, everyone, just so you're aware, supplementals are what I keep, keep announcing annoyingly every day at Senate or every Monday night. Um, these are clubs who are asking for extra funds, and before they come to Senate, they have to be approved by the Student Financial Control Board, and that's comp compromised of three AVPs and two class senators to determine um, whether these funds are necessary for the club um, and if they qualify under uh, the SFCB guidelines. So now the final vote is for you guys. So. Two minutes to speak and then two minutes for questions. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Dean Terrell. I'm currently the editor in chief of Hey Marlene. This is Brian. He's our treasurer right now, our senator's in the back. And uh, we have been an on campus publication for the past three years now. And the reason that 
we were asking for the supplemental is because last semester our previous editor-in-chief missed a budget meeting and the reason that he missed it was because he had to attend to a family emergency so obviously you know that comes first more than anything else so our only other option by the time I was editor-in-chief um, this semester was to gain a supplemental from SGA and so far working with SGA has been a really positive experience and I want to continue to do, to do so but um, the amount that we're asking for the $500 is entirely being used strictly for publication any other funds that we accumulate are going to be accumulated through fundraising. Um, the $500 will go towards two issues uh, per semester because we think that as a publication it's only fair that to be topical and being able, be able to follow current events, it's reasonable to have two issues per semester and we plan on doing the same thing next semester also. So um, yeah, I think that's it. Thank you. All right. Uh, we have some time for questions, I guess. Yep, three, minutes. three minutes. So, do you guys have any questions for Hey Marlene? Right there? Like, what do we uh, discuss? What do we like to talk about, like, topic wise? Um, we range from this is from when the original editor, editor in chief was uh, in charge three years ago. We go over topics anywhere from political satire to on campus events to college lifestyle. Those are t generally three topics we tend to go into but we're always open to ideas that you want to portray or want to talk about and we're more than willing to, to listen because we are um, also try to be part of the student voice and we like to hear the student voice and propel that in a way that's separate from Avant and the wit. All right, any other questions? Question in the back right there. The, the budget was never created because our past editor-in-chief never attended the meeting because he was having a baby. So. That's, that's a pretty good reason. Yeah. Right. It was bad. But everything's fine. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. All right. Any other questions? we got Rob in the back again. Oh, how many, like how many copies? Yeah. Okay, we tend to print anywhere from 200 to 250. Um, it's amazing what 50 copies will do to the budget to increase the amount. Um, I had to show the SFCB the receipts from previous um, prints. We actually work with the on-campus publication center and they also told me they're willing to give us discounts since we're representing them, since we're like one of the few um, clubs on campus who actually uses their resources. You should definitely check out, they're really great. Question right here. How can you be sure that babies will not put their stuff <laughs> No one here is pregnant. It's <laughs> a good question. All right. Any other questions for Hey Marlene? <laughs> That's a good question, Bob. That's true. I mean, you never know. <laughs> All right, Hey Marlene. If there are no more questions, I'm going to ask anyone involved in Hey Marlene uh, to please exit the room as we discuss the supplemental. Congratulations, get the full amount, $500 requested. Um, can we have next IEEE up to the stage? All right, so you have the floor for two minutes, and you have two minutes for questions afterwards. Sounds great, thank you. Yep, and whenever you're ready. Hi, guys. <laughs> My name is Jeffrey Eaker. I'm the chair of IEEE here at Rowan University. IEEE stands for the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. Uh, we're the largest professional society in the world as well as being the chair of the Rowan University chapter. I am also the Region 2 Regional Student Representative, so I represent about 10,000 students on the international level in the Mid-Atlantic region. Um, so IEEE about three years ago had 30 members. Um, going through the past couple years, we've done a lot of activities we've been picking up, sort of culminating in a huge conference last semester. We hosted the Region 2 Student Activities Conference. We brought in 26 universities, had 19 sponsors for a budget of $65,000. And planning this brought in huge amounts of membership. We currently have about 200 members. Uh, 100 of those members are active on a weekly basis. Um, currently, we do a ton of different activities. The point of IEEE 
is to network people and get them internships. Just in the month of October, this Friday, we have Innovative Defense Technologies coming to do a recruiting event. Uh, we have a Lockheed Martin Tech Talk coming up on the 23rd and a Rockwell Automation Seminar coming up on the 24th. We also just hosted a Sumo Robot Tournament, uh, which was in conjunction with our international partnership. Uh, we were able to create a Sumo Robot Tournament, which incorporated this international school in Australia. They were able to compete flawlessly. We had six universities come out to that. Uh, it was a great event. Um, so why am I standing here today? The Student Activities Conference, which we hosted last year, is going to be at Ohio State University uh, this year. So this conference, Region 2 pays for 10 people to go uh, in terms of hotels and costs. Everything's covered. But transportation, they do not provide so much. Um, we are expecting it to be at Lafayette, which is very much in driving distance. Ohio is a bit further away. Uh, we need help paying for that expenditure, as well as um, we have 100 active members, which is a lot higher than we expected. So we've done a lot to move around the budget to be able to cover that. Um, but you know, it all adds up. And um, we really, really, really especially want to be able to send people out to Ohio State for that free conference. It's just getting there. Um, so I'd really appreciate uh, your consideration for this supplemental. And uh, thank you very much for your time. All right, we have two minutes for questions. Are there any questions for IEEE? All right, we have a green shirt right here. Um, so we're looking at a van, most likely. Yeah, put everyone in a van. Have a fun road trip. All right, I have a question over there. Casey, is that? Yep. Yeah. Right, so again, you can only send 10 people. We have 26 universities at the last one. This is basically the 10 most elite people from every student branch across the region. So these people get to network with the companies that are sponsoring that event. Uh, a lot of people get internships and jobs out of this event. And it also brings a lot of prize money back to the university as well as prestige. Uh, so we choose those people based on how they do, for instance, at the Sumo Robot Tournament, their participation at volunteering events, fundraisers, and all the different things I mentioned, such as the uh, seminars. Excuse me, Jeff, one second. Um, I just want to clarify, guys, that supplementals are not for conferences. The amount approved was for exactly what IEEE asked for, for the sumo robot parts, just to clarify. Okay. So we don't fund conferences, but for this, to build the robot, they needed money for parts. That's what the supplemental is specifically going towards, just so you guys... May I clarify on that? Sorry? May I clarify on that? May I clarify? Go yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, so yes, in addition to the conference, we're hosting the sumo robot competitions. So the parts for those competitions, including those universities, also draws in a large amount of budget. Uh, so I guess the treasurer went ahead and switched over to that side of things. We have many expenses in different areas. Sorry for that. Rob and Beck. Correct. Um, so yes, we will, again, budget that uh, differently. We, again, like I said, they were expecting to have that at Lafayette. Um, so that's going to be at Ohio State, though, in sort of a change of plan. So that's sort of where our budget veered away uh, in that regard. Yes. We're going to make this question right here. Yeah. This is the only conference that the region hosts. And again, they, they do provide money for us to, to stay overnight. And it's about $3,000 that they put out for us. All right, I had a question right here. Uh, have you had any fundraising efforts in order to get Yes, that's correct. We have a lot of different fundraising, uh, different things in, in sort of the works. So we've done several food sales already, raising a couple hundred dollars. We do an annual toolbox sale for the freshmen. That is estimated. We haven't done the final tally on the numbers and, and crunched all those things. We're expecting to bring in $1,500 from that fundraiser. It is a big fundraiser. We do a lot of work. Um, and there's a couple other things throughout the semester. We do a yard sale, et cetera. All right, I can take two more questions. Got right in the back right there. Yeah. So I see that this is for parts. Correct. So separate from the conference, uh, the sumo robot competition. So I, I'm speaking on the region level when I talk about the conference. Uh, the Philadelphia section um, is the largest section in the world for IEEE. Again, we had a sumo robot competition that was a lot smaller. Um, uh, September 26th, uh, we brought in Action News. It was great publicity for the university. We had six universities come in. It was an amazing networking opportunity for everyone involved, as well as teaching people how to use uh, the Arduino coding, little microcontrollers, little computers, teaching people how to use robots and bringing in that international perspective. We plan to do the same thing on a much larger scale, offering it to a lot more people. In order to do so, uh, we need this extra funding in order to be able to uh, create these robots. And sort of that growing number of membership sort of caught us off guard, which is why we need the extra money to be able to do so. 
All right, so we are over time, but I'm going to let one more question come in. Is there any other question? Uh, right here, yeah, Lisa, go ahead. Can you that much apart from where you think you're going to So that would come through the fundraising. For, what For instance, yes, the toolboxes that we talked about. Um, Correct. So there are those only for parts. Yeah. Yeah. So it would be for that. Correct. All right. Uh, is there any? We can extend questions. You just have to have the motion for extending time for questions. Is there a motion for that? All right. There's a motion to extend time. Is there a certain amount with that? All right. Second. All right. We're going to extend time. Oh wait. I'm sorry. All those in favor? I'm sorry. How long? I'm so sorry about that. I didn't hear. Five minutes. No, I'm just hearing two minutes. I can't hear. I'm just making sure. Two minutes. Uh, so the motion is on the floor to approve time for two more minutes. Uh, those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Okay, ayes have it. So two more minutes. I heard more ayes. All right, question right there. So there is a budget limit of $250 for each robot. Um, ever there are currently five universities interested in competing. I believe we have 12 teams who are officially or unofficially registered uh, via email and so forth. So you get, you don't have to spend $250. We just put a cap on it and we provide people support in constructing those robots. And so when you put your robot onto the arena, it's $250. And for instance, for the past competition, we had a lot of sponsorships. So we had a local electronics company come and donate prizes. Uh, we had the Philadelphia section. Uh, they see this really, really active student branch and they've, they give us some money for prizes. Um, we're stretching them for money as much as we can, um, but we're here tonight uh, to ask for your support as well. All right, any other questions? Right here. Uh, how do we know what exactly they spend the money on? How do we know exactly how they spend the money? After we give them the money, who's to say that they don't just spend it on transportation? I believe it's oh. MDVs. Yeah. I don't know, I'm just clarifying for myself. Um, there definitely is a process to do that. If Senate asks for that, we can pair with my request to budget to give them that money, we can make sure that that goes to them if you guys want to do that. But I mean, this is what their club does. Um, you explain what it stand, what your club does, right? Yes. Yeah, so like, okay, here, that was a dumb question. Um, but if you guys want that, you can. You do have the option of doing that. And with my request to budget, I'll say that we need to follow up on the paperwork, make sure that only this amount is specifically going to the building of the sumo robots. All right, so I'm going to have one more question out of this two minutes. I'm going to go right here. Black. How many robots are you building? Yes, that's correct. So it depends on the number of teams that register. We're also working in conjunction with the Robotics Automation Society to build these robots. So freshmen uh, will be working with their budget. Currently, the amount of robots that Rowan University will be constructing from our budget will be four. All right, so that was the last question. Um, unless there is a motion to extend more time. If not, can anyone in IEEE please leave the room as we discuss and vote? That's a lot. All right, congratulations, get the thousand in full. Next up, we do have FMA next for $620 for the supplemental. All right, you have two minutes for presentation, two minutes for questions, whenever you're ready. Okay, hi everyone. My name is Regina and I'm the president of the Financial Management Association, or FMA as we like to call it. So we are asking for these additional funds because every year we are a superior chapter for the past four years here at Rowan. So that's given to 5% of FMA chapters internationally and we get this award every year because of our high involvement that we have here at Rowan. Between fundraisers, we do field trips, all our club meetings, our guest speakers that we have, and stuff like that. So we are the only finance club here at Rowan, and we are asking for these supplemental funds, not to confuse everyone, but it's for an educational experience in Philadelphia, 
Every year, being a superior chapter, we are mandated to have one field trip per semester. And in the fall, we usually go to the Philadelphia Stock Exchange, and we get to actually go on the trading floor of NASDAQ. We have an inside tour of the Federal Reserve, and we also do a tour of the US Mint. So we're asking for these funds because every year we usually take the Rowan chartered bus that we have, but because it's already been booked, we need to look outside for an outside transportation. So around $620 was the cheapest means of transportation that we would have. I talked to the secretary of SGA, Bridget, and she's pretty much said that when the bus gets filled, what you have to do is you have to go to outside means. So. Oh, so, <laughs> so we're asking for these funds just because we did the book, the bus is booked, and last year we did have some funds come from our advisors who sold all textbooks and they actually got us $400. So, because we don't have that coming into the school year this year, we would like these funds to help cover the transportation to the educational experience of the Philadelphia Stock Exchange and the tour of other facilities in that area. Perfect timing. All right, that's it. All right, uh, we have time for two minutes for questions. Questions for FMA. Any questions? We have a question right here in front. Um, it's right now. It's scheduled for November on a Friday in November. So, like I said, we have to have one per semester in order to be a superior chapter. Yep. Any other questions? Question right there. Yeah. In the past, we've had to limit it because of the size of the bus and stuff that we get, but usually we have around 15 students. I've gotten word from a lot of other people that they want to come as well, so right now we're looking for about like 30, 35 people to come for the day. Right. Any other questions? I've got a question over there on the side. Because we'd be in Philly for the entire day, depending if we have like say 30, 35 people come, we would have to obviously park in the city, pay for gas, pay for tolls, things like that. I don't know if you're familiar with the like the dollar amount that parking is in Philly. It would probably cost around like thirty dollars just to park one car there for the day. And we actually go around the city as well. So usually we could have the bus pick us up somewhere and drop us off somewhere throughout the day. So if we would have to move the car or anything like that, you'd have to be paying more for parking as well. Time for two more questions I have right here in Prism. We do look into that. We've had, I guess you would call it like a bad experience in the past that we've actually gone through downpouring rains throughout like the entire trip. So like we've literally been like presented badly sometimes because people don't bring umbrellas and they're just. Can I also mention something? Um, usually the bus, it takes us from place to place. So the NASDAQ is located in the opposite direction of the Federal Reserve. So that's a long, long distance from yeah. there. And we have to, we have a time limit. So our speaker, the vice president of NASDAQ has a certain amount of time we have to be there. So by the time we walk there and walk to the other place, we can't be late um, when meeting these speakers. So we, we decided that taking a bus and having a driver was easiest and most convenient and it assures us on getting on time there. All right, so that was two minutes for questions right there, unless you want to extend time. Um, otherwise, we're going to ask anyone in FMA to please leave the room. Oh, there's a motion to extend time. By how, much, how many minutes? By two minutes. All those in sec is there a second? All right, there's a second. All those in favor? When you say, please say aye, also raise your placard so I can also kind of visually see it. So all those in favor, to extend time of two minutes, please raise your hand and say aye. All those in favor? All those opposed? <laughs> all right, motion denied. And please, anyone in FMA, please? Anyone leave the room, please? Thank you. Okay, guys, um, I'm actually a member, so I'm going to step out of the room. I'm going to pass this on to a member of the SFCB so that he may address your questions. But, um, yeah, cause, so he has their request and can answer any questions that I can't in their case particularly. All right, so discussion as soon as everyone leaves.
of proofs for the full mount. <laughs> Would the representatives of ACA please come up? Asian Cultural Association. Two minutes and two minutes. Hello, um, I'm here on behalf of ACA, otherwise known as Asian Cultural Association, and we are seeking approval from the Senate to provide ACA with additional funding of $750 to supplement our efforts at hosting a successful annual Asian Spring Festival. Um, our purpose, our multicultural organization's purpose is to uh, spread awareness of cultural insight and uh, traditions uh, from Asia. And one way of doing this is by hosting our annual spring festival, uh, which takes place in the pit. Uh, ACA has traditionally allocated $1,100 alone for uh, professional contracts with outside uh, groups and performers. Uh, the, the festival is comprised of cuisine, of novelty tables, and of entertainment, and which, as I said before, a portion of this entertainment is from professionals. And so the $1,100, which we usually have, uh, we were not able to come up with that due to readjustment and due to a cut in budget. And so we were able to three, uh, free $350. However, the remaining $750 we are requesting. And I can go further in depth if anyone asks. Thank you. All right, so now we have a minute, two minutes for questions. Um, are there any questions for ACA? We got a question right here. Because actually, we are taking about 75% from our extra funding account, and we really do not want to use all of our extra funds. Um, we, are, we are putting that into uh, our expenditure considerations. And so we are, we are fundraising, but it just won't meet it to, because we calculated and it just, we want to reach it. All right, any other questions? Right here, in the, the glasses again. It's, it can be from that. It's also from our budget that we have at the moment. It, do, it doesn't matter. It's all money that we are putting forward into it. Any other questions? We have a minute for questions. I have a question right here. Uh, yes, there's generally 300 to 500 uh, attendees. And so it's a very popular event for those who attend and know about it. And by word of mouth, they, they approve of it. Any other questions? I have a question over there. Yes. So, so uh, our budget was cut by almost 60%. And this was due to uh, miscommunication on part by our last e-board. Uh, the structure, the hierarchy, it all remained within a few members of our e-board. And so really it's the, the decision on who was attending our budget during, during that specified time slot, uh, it didn't reach uh, the rest of the members. And okay. so our budget was cut significantly. Uh, just as a point of clarification, I was on the FSCB last year. Um, and however, the, their senator did come in after the budget was already finalized. Uh, there was an unexpected emergency, and she did come in at, as soon as we finalized the budget. So we scrapped around. We took away from some of the SGA accounts to give them some kind of budget rather than nothing. So that's where we got the 350. We didn't give them a full amount because we couldn't fund it because the budget was already finalized at that point. But that's where that's why it was cut. All right. So that was two minutes of questions. Unless you want to extend time, is there a motion to extend time? by two minutes. All right, there's no motion for that. Uh, with that, anyone in ACA, please leave the rooms as we discuss and vote. Almost there, everyone, almost there. If you need some treats, there's some treats in the back. All right, you're not little kids, so there is food in the back if you'd like some food. We can bring them in. Uh, would the representatives of Prop Act please come in or come up front? 
congratulations, you got your $750 ACA. Proud fact, you have two minutes. Four minutes total, two minutes for presentation, two minutes for questions. It's right. You can go ahead. Whenever you're ready. All right. Hi, guys. My name is Nicolette. I'm the president of ProfPAC. This is Liz Green. She's our secretary. We're requesting an amount of $648.11. Um, we originally approached with a total budget of $2,500. We had a lot of items from us stolen um, over the summer. We were keeping all of our items in a shed provided to us by athletics, which was unlocked and um, accessible by other people on campus. We lost our prof pack tent and we also had um, 70 shirts stolen from us. So we are kind of out a lot of money. The, sh the tent itself cost us um, $1,000 approximately. So we're looking to protect our items that we have purchased by, or um, we ordered a shed. So it's on campus, we're using it. Um, it's only accessible to us, it's with a key lock. Um, but we had to pay for that with money that we didn't have allotted because we already had our budget together. And because we were chartered at the beginning of this semester, we do not have a budget from SGA, so we are currently working from a very limited amount of money. So the money that we were requesting would pay for the half of the shed that we um, put out of pocket at the beginning of the semester. Um, unfortunately, we cannot request for any of our other funds because they were previous expenses. So this is just covering what we have used um, this semester so far. All right, so we have two minutes for questions. Are there any questions for Nicolette? We have a question in the back, the yellow shirt, it looks like. Um, so he asked whether or not we contacted athletics um, with our lost items, and yes, of course we did. Uh, we do have, um, all, the, all the coaches know about our missing items, we're looking into it, but unfortunately, like, they were stolen and we can't really do anything about that. And because athletics already gave us funding to pay for the items that were stolen, um, they weren't able to give us any more money because they do have a budget. While it is large, it still is already you know, planned out for other things. So they weren't able to help us out there. Any other questions? Sorry, as I can't say. So what did you say exactly um, did you do with the money from athletics? Because I know they gave you $4,000 or so. And also with the stolen items, was there a police investigation or anything done? OK. Um, so athletics does not actually give us $4,000. It's only $2,000 um, for the tent that would cost almost half that budget. Um, we have been looking into a police investigation, but because it happened um, over the summer, it was harder for us to kind of start that process because we weren't here when it happened. And they also can't, like, pretty much prove anything because not a lot of people were on campus, so it's in the works, but like even if there was, um, if they did a police investigation, the only way we could get money back is if we found those items. So it's not like, you know, that we have a way to replace them at the moment, if that makes sense. I have a question right here in front. We don't have any money from SGA. Excuse me? No, because we were chartered on the 16th of September. We um, were a petitioning club when budget hearings happened last year. So we do not have any money from SGA. So like athletics didn't have any money? Correct. Thank you. And what was athletics? Um, so, I mean, if you don't know what Prof Pack is, um, we give a lot of free things to our students because we're all about um, you know, creating a better growing community like these shirts. We give out to all of our members, they're free. We don't charge students for anything. Um, we gave out free orange juice because it was a rainy day this morning. So we're just really doing a lot of things to get people involved with our athletics and also having a better growing community. Um, as we mentioned, the tent, which we bring to all of our events, that was stolen and that was um, $950, so approximately half the budget from athletics. So I mean, we really can't do anything for the students if we don't have means of money. Um, we are currently fundraising. So we do have some kind of income coming in, but we don't really have any other way to get money from students because we're all about you know, doing free stuff for our students. We're not trying to be like, oh hey, like, you want a shirt, but you have to pay $15 for it. Like we're doing everything for free. Okay, so that was the two minutes for questions, um, unless there is a motion to extend time. Nope, all right. So PropPack and, and related PropPack, please leave the room. There we go. It's that's it, you guys. That's you all. That's that's it for it all. There you go. You're approved six hundred eighty-four dollars eleven cents. Um, next up, we do have senator concerns. Are there any senator concerns? No senator concerns. All right. If there's no senator concerns, we're going to go to general announcements. Are there any general announcements? Please come up um, and speak into the podium.
Home stretch. Real quick, by a show of hands, how many of you are seniors? If I pass you out one of these surveys, it just has a name, uh, which day during that week are you graduating, and an idea for your senior week. And at the bottom, I actually cut it off on that fancy little paper cutter, the email part. But if you could write your email down, uh, I'll have one of the senators pass it out to you. So if you guys could just keep your hands up during the announcements, just uh, raise your hand and they'll give you a survey. And then at the end, um, I'll have somebody collect it from you guys at the end. Thank you.